Hello and welcome to the videos about EcoStructure GeoSCADA Expert, formerly ClearSCADA. GeoSCADA Expert is the remote SCADA and telemetry software by Schneider Electric. My name is Steve and in this video we're going to cover an introduction to configuration. So let's get started. So we're going to do a demonstration from the ground up to see how configuration works all the way through. We're also going to see how reusable configuration is. I'm going to start by uh, removing the alarm and give ourselves a bit of room on this smaller video screen. And the first thing we're going to see is on the left hand side, the tree of database objects. Now each database object is of a different type. So we could have a display screen we call a mimic, a channel or an outstation, uh, or a specialist function such as alarm redirection. All of these items are in groups. And if I expand the example projects group, you can see that each group has got a series of subgroups and all of the groups can contain all of those different kinds of objects. When we move a group, such as moving this factory object inside this graphics, object, you can see that it's just moved it straight away and it just moved a reference link. In fact, what it's done is it has changed the name of the objects as children beneath it and automatically handled all of the cross references. So that's one thing we don't need to worry about for the most part is how to reference items because that cross referencing is handled by the renaming process and by ClearSCADA's group hierarchy. Um, I'm going to start by creating a new group and let's create new and pick a group which is right at the top. We've got these super common items like mimic, trend and template here at the top. Actually if you look further down you can see all sorts of specialist object types followed at the bottom by all of the different protocol objects ranging from DNP3 and OPC through to specialist flow computers and uh, uh, variants of protocols such as DNP3 WITS. So going back to create a group and we can give that a name, call it my demo and we can also use the copy and paste. So I can use control C to copy or the edit menu to copy and then paste um, will cause the pasting of that object. And if it's the cursor is on a group, it'll be placed within the group. So let's rename that to pump. You'll see each time you create a group, there is also a mimic automatically created. This is called the, the default view. It's actually linked to the parent group. You don't have to have these. You could delete them um, or there's a registry setting to stop them being created. But uh, let's keep these for now. And in my group pump, we're going to create a couple of points. Now, uh, I'm going to do a demonstrations in later videos about protocols. And so to make things easier for this demonstration, I'm going to use internal points. These are points not read from an external source. They're actually um, internally set, for example, by logic or by a hand action on a mimic screen. So I'm going to create an analog point and call it flow. And a new internal digital point and call that status. So the basics of an analog are that it will have a range or a scale from here 0 to 100 and depending on the type of point it will have different alarm limits. So I'm going to set some alarm limits here and 25 and 10. And you'll see the alarm severities. Um, firstly, there's a, a type which is 
uh, whether it's an alarm or an event or non. I'm going to set these to alarm. And then we have the alarm severity, which I'm going to set to critical high and low for these. You can actually add as many severities as you like up to about a thousand and uh, those severities can have their own colors and other behaviors associated with them. And let's now save this. Um, in fact, another thing we'll do is also enable historic storage. And I'll save that too. For the digital point, just double click on that to open it. We're going to set um, an event and alarm, give them some severities, and there's change the names. There's a default name set which you can uh, enter your own default names into for consistency. Here, what I'm going to do is set the name uh, to be um, OK and failed. OK, and now save. So the tree now gives us the ability to right click on these points and set their value. So I can hand control the analog and set that to um, 50, click OK, and I can hand control the digital point, set that to failed. I could right click on the group and select events and we will see the hand control events and we'll also see an alarm being raised. Now this is coming in yellow because I've set the color of medium alarms to be yellow. Your mileage may vary. Also, if we right click, we can see the live event list, sorry, alarm list by display alarms. And we'll see, we've got an alarm. I can right click here, acknowledge that, then hit F5 or the refresh menu and refresh that and we can see the alarm has been acknowledged. So far so good, but we want to see these on a Mimic dynamic graphic. So I'm double clicking now on the default display object and we can actually drag and drop the flow as a name and drag and drop the value as a formatted value. We can automatically add units if we need to and then drag the status on again as a name and drag it on as a value which in the case of a digital would be a binary value. Um, but let's put it on as a state and we can see that it's in the fail state. So what we've seen is the quick drag and drop way of doing configuration. But equally, we can do other ways, um, such as defining rectangles and shapes and changing their colors, all sorts of different things. So we're going to cover that in just a moment. But first, I'm going to save this picture and you'll see that there is a design mode triangle that appears when we're editing mimics. If I click that to take it out of design mode, then that mimic will um, have the dots removed, which are the grid points for when you're doing design. Also, the entire area is filled with the background, even if the mimic's aspect ratio doesn't match the screen. And because we're now in run mode, uh, we can click on an item and it will show the pick points. Now, because we configured this with drag and drop, the pick points automatically come for free. And so we can now do the hand control and change that to 78 on there. And we get the same context menu that we got on the tree. So we can display the event list. Also, we can show the historic list of values from the historian, which we enabled with that single checkbox. And if we wish, we can also display the historic trend and we can see on the trend it's automatically picked a one day time period which is configurable and it's automatically added the alarm limits again configurable 
and I'm going to use the mouse wheel and zoom in and we can see that we've set this to two values hovering over we started at 50 and there hovering over that point um, we set it again to 78 okay now with the windows I'm going to right click and close all the documents and let's move on to the next phase so that's it for this section now please go to the next video to learn about animations and templates goodbye and please join me again